I love easy ways to witchify my daily life. And I love the bath salts made by your friendly village witch, Belinda of Foxwand Apothecary. With blends such as self-love, anti-anxiety, sleep, new and full moon, you will find something perfect for you. Each one is also infused with magic and Reiki energy too. Try these bath salts as part of your spell work. Place them in a full bath, use as a body scrub, Personally, I love a good full moon bath. You can use the code SUBURBANWITCH for 10% off all of their bath salts, and it's only for listeners of the Witch Talks podcast. Simply head to Fox Wand Apothecary on Etsy, which is linked in the description below this episode. Welcome to Witch Talks, the series for spiritual seekers, witches, and enlightened souls. I'm Hannah the Suburban Witch, professional tarot reader, astrologer, and witch, and I hope you're ready to get up close and personal with your favorite witches. Hello, beautiful witches, and welcome back to another episode of the Witch Talks podcast with me, your host, Hannah O'Neill, the Suburban Witch. Today is November 1st. And oh my goodness, that means it is officially NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. And in honor of NaNoWriMo, today we are talking all the witchy writing tips that I have to give you. So if you are a writer, if you are doing NaNoWriMo, or even if you're not, use the tips that I talk about today in your own writing craft and see how they go for you. Now, don't stress, even if you're not someone who writes books or you're not there yet, or you want to, and you're not sure, it doesn't matter. These tips are going to also be helpful. I'm sure you'll be able to make connections into other areas of your life and your craft as well. Some of these are simply motivational tips to help you reach a goal. And you can listen to it with that in mind. I also think you might just feel inspired on how I use witchcraft and ritual and things like that in my daily life in achieving normal mundane goals, right? And incorporating them together. So it might inspire you to do that in your own practice as well. Before we get started though, let's see what's come through for Hannah, help me. Today's question comes from Bruna Carita. She sent me a DM on the Witch Talks podcast Instagram page, which is simply at Witch Talks podcast. You can find it and follow along for little glimpses and behind the scenes magic that we have over there. And Bruna says, I have a curiosity. Matches versus gas, lighter or stove. Does it have to be matches for spells? I never have matches at home and my auntie almost killed me when I said I used my stove to light candles most of the time because it's my only fire maker most times. She gave me a box full of matches and I love the intention, but I was wondering if it is that much of a big deal to use lighters and stoves to make the fire instead of matches. This is a wonderful question. And I think many people listening will resonate either with feeling like this when they first began their craft or even still feeling like this now. Usually, especially in the beginning, we just wanna do everything right. Sometimes you don't even know you're not doing something right until someone says something and then you freak out that you've been doing it wrong the whole time. Usually once you get a little bit more experienced, you realize that a lot of that sort of stuff doesn't really matter too much. There, I said it. Now, what I think this could come from is in some of Silver Ravenwolf's works, which were very, very popular in the 90s. I do believe she mentioned that matches, because of the sulfuric smell that is associated, is more commonly used in things like banishing. So she said, don't use matches. So a lot of people went, great, I'm going to use a lighter. Lighters are more accessible. They're easy to have on hand. But then we have amazing Scott Cunningham, who says that matches are way better because you can see the little spark of energy as it ignites onto the candle. Some witches love the old world feel of matches and other people like the convenience of a lighter. You can get some really cool looking lighters too. What it comes down to, however, is whatever works for you. If it bothers you that you're using a lighter or a stove, then change it. If it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. As long as you got the fire there, you're good to go in my books. I'll tell you what I personally do, and I don't think this is something that everybody needs to do, but it's something that I have developed into my practice and I really love doing. Whenever I'm doing any form of magic, I have a candle burning. This isn't a candle magic spell. This is a candle that is basically lighting my space to guide my spirits to me. It brings in my ancestors. It brings in my guides. It's like, hey guys, I'm doing something. You can see I've like turned on the porch light. Come on in. 
And that standard ritual candle is what I then use to light my other candles when I do candle magic. I will often use that to light my ancestor ritual candle, my deity offering candles, my healing candles that I place on my altar for when I'm sending people some healing energy. Let's be honest, some of these candles can be hard to light with a lighter anyway or a match because they can be a really long glass candle and you're going to light it all the way down the bottom or something. So I'll often actually use a skewer or a piece of dried willow branch. I collected a few ages ago, wove some into a protective amulet, and then the rest of the leftover ones, I just light on that main candle and then light other stuff in my room. Again, that is my personal practice. You do not have to copy me, not at all. Use what is easy and accessible for you. Now, when it comes to things like charcoal, lighters, little charcoal disc things, I actually hold them with a pair of tongs over my gas stove and I will light them on that gas flame until they're lit and then pop them in my little cauldron filled with some sand and go about my business. And I also use lighters sometimes, like don't stress, you're all good. Great question though. So sometimes I do find it can be a little bit more of an old school thing to only use matches. You absolutely do not have to. Lighters are totally fine. And now to NaNoWriMo, right? This is a challenge to write 50,000 words in 30 days. Okay, that is a lot. If you do not know how much that is, right? That That's a lot if you've never written. To put it in a little bit of perspective, people who have who write a PhD thesis, that's 80,000 words. And they usually get like three to four years. Some people will write most of that in about a six month time frame, but still that's 80,000 words in like six months, right? It's a lot different to 50,000 in 30 days. So that's just to put it into perspective as to how much is actually going into this challenge. But also not to dissuade you because it's really fun. It's super fun. And for me, I find it a really great time to just hyper focus on one task, almost like cramming everything into one month of the year and then just relaxing for the rest of the year. So whether you are an ordinary writer simply looking for some witchy writing tips or a chaotic writer who wants to use witchy tips to win NaNoWriMo, you are in the right place. So NaNoWriMo, I know it sounds weird. It stands for National Novel Writing Month. And when I first heard that unusual word, I was about 21 and driving a hotel shuttle bus through the deep snowy roads of the Canadian Rocky Mountains. Some young guy, I don't know, probably from Toronto, was excitedly telling me all about it as I dropped him at the Banff Resource Centre to attend a writer's workshop for NaNoWriMo. I remember his enthusiasm immediately inspiring me to start work on my own spooky novel. I'd had this idea that it had been playing in my mind for months and included an ice core being used as a weapon, a murder weapon, and then it conveniently melted, destroying all evidence of it. And then this wailing snowy lake siren hidden in the mountains. Unfortunately, I didn't actually listen to his advice or what he was saying around why NaNoWriMo was good and just figured I can smash out a novel in a month on my own. No, I was, <laughs> I was very wrong. I actually don't have any clue where that lonely forgotten word document ended up, but it was nowhere near the goals or the dreams that I'd had for it. And I felt like I would never be a writer because that's too hard for me. And obviously I'm terrible at it. And I just failed. Fast forward to 2022. And the word NaNoWriMo popped up in my periphery once more. And this time I actually looked it up. Thank God yes, I did, because by the end of November, I had successfully written over 50,000 words for my novel with the help of exactly three Discord groups, one local writers meetup, two meltdowns, one tarot deck, one stack of note cards, one jar of rocks, lots of community support, aka peer pressure, one bottle of ADHD meds, weird YouTube background music. Did you know there is like lo-fi pirate core aesthetic music it's it's another world over there one bottle of ritual oil nano reward badges two amazing podcasts one epic spotify playlist some very concerning google searches one local library the nano resource including groups live interviews and prep 101 one very frazzled husband two confused kids and a bunch of witchy tools so that's what i used but don't worry, I'm going to break down a bunch of that in the witchy form for you today. So the very first one is to use correspondence to get you in the writing mood. We, we know correspondences, right? We're witches. And creative correspondences are your best friend. 
So as my good friend Australia Taylor, who has been on the podcast before, says in her book, Inspiring Creativity Through Magic, which is incredible, by the way, you should definitely get your hands on it if you are a creative, a writer, dancer, artist, whatever. So she says that songs, herbs, crystals, colors, times of day, seasons and moods are all examples of creative correspondences that you can use to communicate with the creative spirit and facilitate the flow of inspiration. During nano, we need to be able to step into the zone every single day and having correspondences that alert spirit and yourself that it's time to write is a great little writing tip. As a mother to two young kids who are six and two currently, with my partner away 50% of the time, I don't really have a time of day or a mood that is consistent for writing. Like I can't rely on that. But when I do get my moment in time that I can sit down and do it, I make sure that everything is working in my favor to help me get those words down. So here's an example from my own writing practice. Every time I sit down to write, I have a hot drink. So this is a tea or a coffee and a bottle of water every single time. Sometimes there's also a juice. Sometimes I have three drinks. That's okay. You can do that. I always have a piece of fluorite nearby. Now this is good for mental focus so I can pick it up and hold it in times of deep thought and problem solving. But I also really love using fluorite because it is used in the story that I'm writing. So it's, it ties me into this particular work in progress that I'm doing. I have a large piece of calcite that aids in the flow of words, calcite, blue calcite specifically. Blue calcite is wonderful for communication. And lastly, this is the most important part. I dab a few drops of Azazel ritual oil, which is from the poisonous apothecary onto my wrists. And I invoke the spirit of Azazel to guide my words. Why that oil? Well, my main character for my current work in progress is literally Azazel, the fallen watcher angel. And the smell puts me immediately in the frame of mind for working on this specific project and getting into my MC's head. MC means main character. As a side note, I also leave my phone in another room because I am highly distractible and I often use lo-fi music to help with my focus. I do have some lo-fi chilled out witchy playlists on my YouTube channel that you can use as well. And if you are writing scenes with a little bit of oomph, there's another playlist that I use. I call it writing moods. There's like a, there's one that's like a villain playlist, a villain song thing. It's like a mashup of all these like put you in your villain mode things and they're great for writing sexy scenes or things with a little bit of sexual tension and just some of those more antagonistic point of views. Now my second writing tip is to pull out your tarot cards or your oracle cards, whatever, just whatever you have, pull out your divination tool. Trust me when I'm going to say tarot from now because that's what I use, but you can sub in oracle cards if you need. But trust me when I say that using the tarot for writing is a game changer it's a freaking game changer these are the things that i use it for brainstorming ideas plot creation subplot creation backstory ideas character creation pushing past writer's block warm-up exercises before writing and exercising my creativity muscle so i do have something called the plot planning pyramid tarot spread uh, which gives you an example of exactly how i use the tarot in my writing practice and i will link you to that in the show notes But as a suggestion, when I'm creating characters, a simple spread is to try and pull three cards. This is also a great uh, exercise to do with kids. Like my six-year-old adores this. She's got her own tarot deck. She does this all the time, pulls out three cards and just makes up characters. And she thinks it's so much fun. It's good for her to get, get her head around the tarot and what things mean. So when you pull these three cards, card one is going to tell you what type of character they are. Card two is going to give you their strength and card three is their weakness. So let's say we pull card one and it's the Knight of Wands. That's going to tell us that this character we're creating, they're reckless, quick spirited, bold and brash. Perhaps a young man desperate to prove himself. Card two, maybe it's the Ace of Pentacles. Maybe our character's strength is luck. They've always got the odds stacked in their favor and most of their gambles work out for them. This probably aids in his recklessness. But card three, maybe we get the sun. And in a negative position, right, this is their weakness. How can we, you know, it gets you in that creative mindset of like, hmm, how could the sun be a weakness? Well, perhaps this weakness is toxic positivity. Maybe this guy cannot see anything but the glass half full, which gets him into lots of tricky situations where people take advantage of him. Like what a fun, well-rounded and complex character that I just created in literally like 30 seconds. 
You can also experiment with asking questions like, how should character A respond to character B? What am I missing in this scene? How can I increase the tension here? What is this chapter missing? All sorts of stuff. Maybe you know that something has to be in this, like something has to be delivered to the main character. Who's going to bring it there? You pull a card and be like, oh, page of pentacles. Okay, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's some young boy and he kind of wanders in. They, they have to say, you know, hurry up, boy, get here quickly. Like it can give you such a great little boost of creativity around a background character that you don't have to put so much thought yourself in because the tarot is helping you. All right, so which tip number three, flow with the cycles. If you are listening to this on November 1st or in November 2023, NaNoWriMo will take place over this month. And this year it's beginning in a waning moon phase. So you need to take it easy on yourself at this time and don't burn yourself out too soon. You cannot give 100% every single day. Remember that. So when I'm in the waning phase, I like to give myself a goal of writing one sentence a day. One sentence a day, right? That takes the pressure off achieving huge word counts every day. And let's be honest, I can never stop at one. But if I just convince myself, because if I'm like, oh my God, I have to write 2,000 words, how am I going to do it? I just, I procrastinate and I do other shit. But if I'm like, you know what, just go in and write one sentence so at least you can tick off and say you've written today and you get that little badge thing. There's like badges on the website for NaNoWriMo. It's fantastic. Dopamine little hits. But if I go, oh, right, fine, I'll just write one. And then next thing you know, I've written like a couple of paragraphs. I'm like, oh, sweet. <laughs> it's awesome. Just takes the pressure off. One sentence a day. So then the new moon is going to be on the 13th of November, 2023, and it's all up from there. So take advantage of the moon's waxing phase as that energy builds your momentum for a huge finish. Now, if you are someone who menstruates, I want you to pay attention to your personal cycle over the lunar cycle. Okay, so that takes precedence. So go slow in week four and week one. So this is just before your period and during your period, the bleeding time of your cycle. That's your slow time. And then give 100 and a million percent during week two and three when you're ovulating. Literally, ovulation period, if you're someone who menstruates, is like you can get your whole month's worth of stuff done in that week sometimes. And then I suggest you save any editing for week four of your cycle, as that's when your body's preparing to shed the uterine lining. So it's a really good time to also shed the words you don't need. Now, my witchy writing tip number four is to create a writing ritual. Now, I talked about creative correspondences earlier. That's kind of ritualistic in a way, but this is going one step further. So as witches, rituals are second nature and you will want to craft something that works best with you and your own practice. But here's a little step by step ritual idea for you. Perhaps you have some sacred writing clothes, socks or jewelry that you wear, a necklace that you put on before stepping into the writing space, a ring that's charged with your intent for this work in progress. A nice pair of fluffy socks if you live in a cold area. Make it work for you. And then you could cast a circle to protect your space and your energy whilst you're writing. Maybe light a candle to your guides, ancestors, deities or spirits to aid in your creative endeavours. You can cleanse, ground and centre yourself before opening up your document and speak words of intent over your computer before you begin. When you've finished, close your circle, blow out your candle, remove your sacred items and thank your spirits for their energy and turn your computer off to close out your ritual. And the actual turning off, I'm guilty of this, I never turn my computer off, but the actual turning your computer off is such a great way to close out the energetics around this ritual. All right, witchy writing tip number five. You knew this is coming. This is my favorite form of magic and that is candle magic. As a side note, my candle magic class is available in the shop this month because I'm not doing services, right? I'm not selling my guidance calls. So you can't book in with me right now. I'm not selling astrology reports right now. I'm not selling any of the things that require me to do anything. So you can access my classes for this month. All three of the classes are available. So my tarot class, my psychic class, and my candle magic class. They're not usually all available all at once, but this month they are. Now, as a witch with chronic illness, a lot of my magic is what I call low energy witchcraft. And don't worry, we have a full podcast episode that will be coming out around that. Now, my low energy witchcraft is out of necessity. And candle magic falls into this category. And that also makes it perfect for NaNoWriMo, which is when we're short on time and have a limited brain capacity for anything other than writing. So you want a super low demand candle spell. I'm going to suggest purchasing like a ritually fixed candle spell like a crown of success or a road opener for when you're in a tricky slump, aka the middle. <laughs> well, personally, I actually find Amy from Rose Thorn Cottage, again, special friend of the podcast, 
Amy has a road opener spray that is incredible. I, it's always on my desk and I will spritz it on myself before sitting down to like burst through any writer's block or if I'm in a tricky scene or whatever. That road opener spray is amazing. And side note, when I'm telling you the things that I use, like the road opener spray, I don't get paid for that. I'm just telling you what I like because I like it. So a leveled up version of this would be to create your own candle magic spell to suit your needs. So perhaps you want a clarity candle. You would use maybe blue chime candle and some rosemary to find clarity around your ideas. Maybe a creativity candle, an orange chime candle with some cinnamon would work well for that. Perhaps a focus candle. If you're really struggling to get your focus in, use a white chime candle and some peppermint. And another one that is often overlooked for this sort of creative magic, consistency. A consistency spell. I would suggest using a brown candle and some lemon balm or vanilla for that one. My witchy writing tip number six would be to invoke a deity. So I have an amazing website source for you, and that's called Godfinder. You can look that up. And whilst there are some incredible gods of writing and poetry, such as Thoth, who is my own deity, Mercury and Hermes, who are technically also Thoth, if you think of Hermes Trismegistus, uh, there's Benton, Aka, Benzi, Ten, there's Bragi, there's the Muses and Cadmus. You may have a more specific need for your book, though, so more than just writing. So if you're writing a lovely smutty romance fic, then of course you'll want to be invoking Aphrodite or Venus. Set up a lovely altar and light a candle or some incense for them when you sit down to write. Maybe your novel is one of death and war, in which case Odin would be a good choice. He tends to like some sacrifice though, so a drop of blood on a candle for him or dropped at the base of a tree to call his energy into your novel is an idea. As I said above, I invoke Azazel, who's an angelic spirit, when writing my current work in progress, but I wouldn't if I was working on a different piece. And I always have Thoth on my altar, and one of my offerings to him is literally taking time out to write. It's a good system we have going. Witchy writing tip number seven is to join a writing coven, otherwise known as a writing group. Now, I run a Discord called Word Witches for witchy writers that runs year round and it's going to heat up during nano, I'm sure. Finding your people can be an excellent motivator and support network because writing is fun, but sometimes it's not. And writing is easy, but sometimes it's not. And writing consistently every day for 30 days with a minimum word count of 1,666 words, that is a gigantic effort. And trust me when I say you need people around you who get it, who you can vent to, who you can turn to when you're stuck in a rut. Find your witches, find your people. Witchy writing tip number eight, employ sigil magic everywhere. Like get out a pencil, craft together a couple of sigils to help you achieve your goals. I'd suggest some for creativity, inspiration, determination, focus, clarity, consistency, guidance, and even protection. You might want to protect your magical writing space from interruptions. Don't forget to charge them up before you use them. And of course I have a how to make a sigil video on my YouTube channel if you need some help with this. And then get creative. I love writing sigils on rocks and popping them in my pockets or holding them when I need what they symbolize. You can trace them in the air. You can draw them onto your body with markers, moisturizer, bodily fluids, or ritual oils. And you can put them on sticky notes and onto your computer, beneath the keyboard, basically wherever you can. Now, witchy writing tip number nine is to utilize tea magic. I'm sure you get the gist by now. We want clarity, focus, creativity, and an iron strength of will. Thank you very much. You can do all of this with the help of a cup of tea, in enchanted tea, obviously. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do all the work for you and list a spell for each of those things. I'm sure as a witch, you have your favorite correspondences and teas yourself. But here's a little tea spell that I like to use every now and then. And this is with some peppermint tea. You would usually steep it for about five minutes covered. And then you can stir clockwise if you're adding sweetener or simply breathe these words over the cup. Cup of tea, cup of tea, give me a dose of clarity. Make it clear so I can see where and what the words should be. Breathe that over the cup before drinking it down. 100% recommend that one. You're welcome. And the last tip I have is my witchy writing tip number 10, and this is to create a writer's book of shadows. Honestly, this is one of the most important ones. <laughs> it's not really witchy, but I called it Book of Shadows because it's 
kind of makes it sound witchy, right? So firstly, I highly recommend using October to plan out the novel so you can hit the ground running on November 1st. That's when this podcast comes out though. So if you found this a little late, you'll know for next year. My other tip is to keep notes. <laughs> so create a document. I use Notion or you can grab some spiral notebooks. And when you do start writing your book, keep notes of each character, including how you describe them, what words or gestures they use often and how they're dressed or any backstory that they have. This will help you when bringing them back in for future chapters to create some continuity in their description. While you're at it though, make sure to keep notes of locations too. When you describe a new scene, a city, a bedroom, again, note it down. I cannot tell you how annoying it is to get to chapter 14 and start describing a side character's bedroom and then you think, oh damn, how did I describe this last time? And not only can you not find it, but you can't even remember which chapter it was in. Oh my god, it wastes a lot of time. I did this a few times and then I went and read through like so much of my writing it took ages and remembered I deleted it and I never actually kept that section so it was a waste of time so lastly you want to create a little chapter overview for yourself so that you can quickly reference when something happened in the story this is immensely helpful when it comes to editing later down the track as well plus if you're moving chapters or plot points around you will forget where and how you wrote stuff it's just the nature of the beast so here's how I do mine just as an example it doesn't have to be a lot just key points right so let's say I say chapter four I'm going to write whose point of view it was written in and what location chapter four is in I'm going to say maybe my MC meets with X to discuss Y maybe my MC remember that means main character discovers their brother is a werewolf and says an important line in the story so I want to make sure that's in my little plot overview right my chapter overview then we have a pov switch maybe to the brother who's hiding in the bushes watching the scene play out and the brother makes plans to go underground before the next full moon so then when i've written and i'm like 20 chapters past that and I go oh crap when did that thing happen where the brother found out and i look over I go, oh yeah that and now i can you know utilize this here and there so there you have it there's my 10 incredible witchy tips for writers who want to win NaNoWriMo or just writers in general or creatives whoever you are. Of course, you can utilize these tips at any time of the year, but personally, my inner writer loves the rush and thrill of a full month writing challenge and then hiding in a secret cabinet inside my mind for the other 11 months of the year. It works for my ADHD brain. I hope to see you on my Discord server, and if you have any tips, or if these ones worked well for you, please let me know. I would love to hear it. And during November, I'm going to be sharing a few writing and story prompts using the tarot on my Instagram page, so keep an eye out for that too. On another side note, I have just launched my very own private community and no it's not on patreon anymore so i'm closing down patreon after realizing how many thousands of dollars they take in fees and i have rebranded it i have called this the suburban witches society it is through my website and it is phenomenal like i'm so impressed my website designer took my brief and ran with it so it is a subscription private membership still right it's either $30 a month or $300 for the year remember that is in Australian dollars all of my pricing is in Australian dollars so for anyone in the US the UK Europe it's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper for you guys once it converts down but the benefits of a suburban which is society membership uh, you get access to our thriving private community of kindred spirits we do have a private group on Facebook it is very active You'll get exclusive behind the scenes insights into my own personal practice. For example, next week I need to clean my altar and reset it up. I'm going to film all of that and provide that to my private members. You'll get behind the scenes content of the podcast. So that's unedited interviews with my guests and early access. So I literally put them up sometimes months before they actually go out to the public. There is a wealth of learning resources on astrology, tarot and witchcraft and some writing tips as well. Plus, we have monthly group calls for discussion, connection, and personal readings with me. It's got real, like, sleepover vibes. It's so much fun. Now, the resources library that I have is going to be, like, nothing that's possible on Patreon. You know what I didn't like about Patreon? It was boring to look at. It was, everything was just white. And it was really hard to access benefits. It was really hard to find what you were looking for, to know which ones you'd already utilized. Like, yeah, you got access to, like, a full backlog of stuff when you went on. But it was hard to find all that stuff. 
it wasn't user friendly but this one I've kept user friendliness in the front of mind so the resources library it's set up more like a course so there's a progress bar and the ability to complete the resources so you know which ones you've done so when I put up a pdf download of you know here is access to a sleep jar spell that I created and you click download on that it goes tick and you know that you've done that one right it like gets rid of it not gets rid of it you can still access it but you know what I mean and I upload new ones every single month in the resources so there's every month there'll be a new resource there's always going to be the behind the scenes podcast episodes the monthly calls you get so much in this guys anyway enough about that I hope you've had a lovely time listening to me today and happy writing I'll catch you next time